I use GIMP to edit all of my thumbnails, and overall I think it's a pretty great application, but I know it has some serious flaws and things that need to be added. But I didn't realise it was this popular to hate GIMP. I've read through this post off camera multiple times and I'll leave it linked in the description down below. But I'm really unsure why it got so many upvotes because it basically boils down to GIMP is bad because it's not Photoshop. And sure, there is certainly some merit to that argument. Some people just want Photoshop and that's all they're ever going to want. But that's not exactly fixable without literally cloning Photoshop. But GIMP does have some actual problems, so what could make it better? I'm not going to focus on things like UI and key bindings, even though those are fairly popular complaints, because anyone who is seriously using this application can modify those things to their heart's content and make it work exactly the way they want. It certainly could be better out of the box, no doubt, but it's not really that big of a deal. And I use a modified version of PhotoGimp anyway, plus I'm not exactly an expert in UI and UX design, so any argument I would make there would basically just be nonsense. One thing that would be quite nice, which I know is coming, is better performance. Now on Linux, it's perfectly fine, like nothing, nothing exceptionally bad. But if you try to use GIMP over on Windows, GTK2 is not made to work well on that operating system. And with the GTK3 rewrite, it's not going to be perfect, but it's certainly going to be better. How much better? Well, we'll have to see when the rewrite is complete, but judging by some of the early beta testing, it does seem to be quite an improvement. Another thing that would be quite nice that I'm sure you've heard some complain about before is layer management, because the layer management in GIMP is terrible. So every other photo editing application, I would better click say this image right here or this layer and then hold shift and then select a bunch of them. You can't do that in GIMP. How it's still missing this feature after 20 plus years? Well, I have no idea. I genuinely don't. So if you want to do the multi-layer selection, Basically, everything has to be pre-planned. You have to go and make yourself folders, make your things exist inside of those folders, and then you can move the folders around, you know, into folders and out of folders and all of that stuff. But it's not as flexible as just being able to select things as you want to select them and move the contents of the folder around in a group and all of that stuff. And that does the job, but it's certainly not as flexible as just being able to select it as you need it. Another thing is every effect you do in GIMP, let's say you want to do some, some color correction, for example, and adjust the hue. So now I'm Shrek. If I go and apply this, this is being applied directly to that layer, and the only way to get rid of that is to undo the change. This is a destructive effect. A non-destructive effect would be like this border around my text. So this border is on a separate layer. I can go and move this around. I can go and apply new effects to this. I can go and disable it. I can do whatever I want, independent from the text itself. Now, unless you go out of your way to say copy an image and then apply an effect to that copy, there is no way to do a non-destructive effect inside of GIMP. And there are many cases where you might have like five different effects on one layer and you want to go back and say, get rid of the middle effect. In something like Photoshop, that's something you can do. Or maybe you don't like the order the effects are in and you want to have, say, your color correction be before the blur instead of after the blur. In GIMP, the way you would do that is go all the way back through your edit history, then reapply the effects and then remake all of the changes that you've now deleted. You don't have to be an expert in image editing to see how that's way less convenient. Speaking of convenience, GIMP has this really great edit history. This goes basically all the way back to the start of the last time you loaded the application. And that's the problem. It's the last time you loaded the application. So if we go and save this and then close the application and reopen GIMP, what we are going to see is there is no way to go further back in the history. When you've opened up the application this time, this is where the history starts. And in this case, maybe I don't like these changes and I don't want to look like Shrek anymore. Well, unless I had a backup of the image, there's no way to get that back. Now this problem is a lot more complicated and not one that I really know how to fix. So you may or may not know, but GIMP does support Photoshop PSD files. But like how, say, LibreOffice Writer supports docx files, it doesn't support it 100%. It supports the file format, 
but not every single effect and every single thing you can do inside of the original application. So sometimes you'll see you open up a PSD and things just look really strange. This is supposed to be like a a wave or a hazy sort of effect and it's done this thing. I don't know what it's doing. Obviously that would require bringing the effects of GIMP in line with what is available inside of Photoshop. And while it has a lot of what Photoshop can do, it's not perfect. And that's why we get results like this. GIMP also supports a plugin and macro system. The plugins can be used to fill in features that are missing from GIMP, but I want to focus on the macros. Let's say you have a bunch of images and you want to apply a bunch of different effects. You want to apply a hue and saturation. You want to apply a invert. You want to apply an exposure. You want to just apply a bunch of random different effects. Now you could go and manually apply those to every single image, or you could just go and automate it. There is a macro system and you can go and write a script that applies all those effects. But this being in Python requires some level of programming knowledge. It's by no means complex Python, but it's Python nonetheless. And if you're someone who just knows how to edit images, you don't know how to program whatsoever, you cannot use that functionality. What I would like to see is some sort of graphical interface to do this. You could have a list where you just drag in effects you want to use and tweak the effects to what you want to be, and then that could add a button to one of the context menus so you could apply that whenever you want. It's not something you would use every single day, but when you want to do that bulk editing, it would be a massive time saver. Something that currently doesn't save time is the way that SVGs are handled. So you can import an SVG, but when you import it, it has to be rasterized. So I can go and say, I want this to be, you know, 500 by 600. But if I go and resize this now, it's going to be resized as a rastered image. Let's make this, you know, a thousand. And when we do that, obviously it's going to be kind of blurry now, but that defeats the whole purpose of using an SVG. So having dedicated SVG layers where they retain their SVG properties would be really cool. It would be nice to be able to make and modify SVGs as well, but that can be left up to something like Inkscape. Just being able to resize them, retaining that SVG property would be absolutely amazing. And what sort of GIMP video would this be if I didn't mention the shape tool, or better yet, the complete lack of a shape tool? So I could go and make a new layer, and let's say I want to have a rectangle. So I can go and then fill that rectangle in, but let's say I want to have a rectangle that's, you know, not just a filled in box. Well, I could go up to select here, I could now shrink this selection, let's shrink it by 8, and then delete that inner section. The same thing is going to work for an ellipse as well, but that is way too many steps. Why can't I just have a shape tool here, fill in a shape, select the properties of the shape, and then be done with it? I know that problem is a bit of a meme at this point, but I've lost track of how many times I've been prototyping a new layout and need to make a square for like where my chat's going to be and where my face cam is going to be and all of that stuff, or I've been trying to censor out part of an image, and it's just been way harder than it needs to be. But I know that is on the list of potential features for GIMP 3. Whether it's going to happen and when GIMP 3 is actually going to release, I don't know. But it is something the devs are aware of and hopefully will fix. Now I'm very aware that for a lot of these features they are available as plugins. Not every single one of them, but for things like layer effects I know those do exist. The problem though is that for things like that they're available inside of Photoshop as a default. And when you have to rely on plugins, it's not going to be a perfect experience. So if GIMP updates, then you have to get the plugin updated and maybe the dev just disappeared and no longer is updating the plugin. You have to worry about actually installing the plugin. And there are all of these problems that you have to deal with when relying on plugins rather than default features. On that note, a package manager style system for installing plugins would make it much, much easier. You have a place that is just managed by GIMP, people can upload their plugins there, and then you have some sort of interface inside of GIMP to just install plugins from that location. Obviously, you would still support installing from third-party locations, but just having that as well would make it much easier. But even in its current state with the problems it has, GIMP is a great alternative to Photoshop, but it's just that. It's an alternative, it is not and has never been a one-to-one -one replacement for Photoshop. If your entire workflow is built around Photoshop, you can't just go and migrate to GIMP. It's not going to be like that, but that's fine because GIMP can still improve the experience and make people who are using open source software rather than using Photoshop have a better time using it. 
But let me know your thoughts on GIMP in the comments down below. What do you think needs to improve? Or maybe you think everything is perfect and you want nothing to ever change. I would love to know. So if you like this video, let me go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Johnny Barrow, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.